Hello everyone, it's Rika Mabel, your Airbnb super host and your Airbnb brand strategist. So for today, I'm gonna be sharing with you the six tough lessons that I learned as an Airbnb super host this 2021. Just a little backstory, we started renting out our properties in Airbnb last March. So we started with our family beach house in Lemery, Batangas. Back in those days, I still don't know anything about Airbnb hosting at all, like zero. So back then, I was a super lurker in Google looking for articles on how to deal with this, how to deal with that when it comes to handling guests. And there's also a lot of, you know, trust your gut kind of moments. Fast forward, I'm so grateful that we now have two active Airbnb listings in Lemery, Batangas. And we also have another two active listings in Tagaytay City here in my hometown. And this coming January, I'm so grateful to God that we have four upcoming new beach house places in Lemery, Batangas. And we'll also have another one upcoming listing in Tagaytay City. Just a disclaimer, I didn't do this all on my own. I have angels with me, I have my parents with me guiding me along the way, and I also have um, our caretakers, our super dedicated caretakers making this all happen for us. Yes, I'm so grateful. And right now, I'm gonna be sharing with you the six tough lessons that I learned as a super host this year so you won't have to make the same mistakes that I did if you're planning to start out with your own Airbnb business. Yes. All right. So let's get started. So the first lesson that I learned is that you must organize so you don't agonize. In short, organize, don't agonize. So what do I mean by this? So if there are things in your business that you could automate, automate it immediately. It's like you don't have to go on and suffer all the time by having manually having to manually type your responses to inquiries that is already frequently asked. Yes, because my mistake back in the day was that every message that I get in our Facebook page and our Airbnb, there I always reply to those inquiries manually. And it's very difficult because back then I thought that it's the best way to go because at least it's more personal but it compromised my energy so much that I burned out and the worst thing was that um, even though I was burned out I have to keep on working because I only have me in the team when it comes to answering inquiries back then yes it was a total disaster so what i recommend is you make like a google docs file of all um tabulate all the frequently asked questions over there and then you copy paste every copy paste and then you personalize it a bit and then send it to your um to the person who's inquiring about your place i do that because at least the energy that i have when i wrote to those faqs will remain the same when the receiver gets it so the wording is so much better and it's more you know it's so much better yeah and yes so organize so you will not agonize it's a super important lesson if you don't organize you will really agonize because instead of focusing on the things that you're good at you're gonna focus on things that you're not so good at repetitively in a very repetitive manner it's gonna burn you out like crazy don't be like me who you know really um did things manually at first and it was super difficult. Um, I'm not sure if my close friends or family members know, but I kept it all to myself. And it was super difficult, like super difficult. If you don't organize if or if you don't create systems in your business, in your Airbnb business, you will certainly agonize. And this could also be your guide when you already start outsourcing people in your Airbnb business. So what do I mean by that? You could someday designate a person to answer all the inquiries that is related to your business so you won't have to. And at the same time, you could still retain the same quality of responses just like how you do it yourself. So it's like you're really gonna be delegating that task to someone and you'll also be sure uh, it, it 
it will be guaranteed that as long as that person that you hired followed the instruction that you have or the the style that you have for answering inquiries the bookings will go so well so that you could also focus on other more important areas in your business just like maintenance um, supplies um, partnerships and all those things yes the second lesson that I learned is set boundaries yes set boundaries so this is actually a very freelancer kind of mindset because I'm also a freelancer but you must always set boundaries you must set expectations with your guests so how do you do that so in your Airbnb description you could always put there that you only respond to inquiries at for example 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. only because that's the the that's the only time that you're available but you can always stretch it however you like you can always customize those things however you like so for example you're gonna put in your Airbnb that you only answer inquiries from only 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. because that way they'll know why you're not responding to their messages so because back then I always get messages hello hello are you still there hello please reply yes so you must always set those kind of things for them to also know when will they expect for you to respond you know to respond to their questions and other inquiries and also at the same time so people won't be confused as to why you're not answering so when i started um it was a very crazy process looking back at it now because i start answering inquiries at 6 a.m in the morning and then i end at 11 p.m in the morning because um back then uh, i was super happy with all the inquiries and stuff i'm, I'm super grateful for all the inquiries However, what I realized is you can't give what you don't have. So if you don't have time to recharge your energies, you'll burn out. And once you burn out, you won't be able to have the same momentum and the same energy that you want to have in your business. So if you don't set boundaries sayo tsaka sa guest mo, it will be so complicated and they'll get confused. And as my mentor always say confusion kills conversion so if you don't set expectations from the beginning there will be a lot of confusion let's move on to the third tough lesson that I learned this year is progress over perfection for those of you who doesn't know I am a recovering perfectionist like I'm a super perfectionist and I really want everything like as ideal as it is so that is not very healthy for myself, for my business, and for the people who work with me. Yes, I know. I finally admit it. Yes. <laughs> I've come a long way from being like the super idealistic and perfectionist kind of person. And I learned this year that progress is much more important than perfection. Like perfection is not the end goal. Being perfect is not the end goal, but progress is. As long as you show up to yourself, you show up to your business, you show up for your guests, that is already okay. And as long as little by little you make these baby steps into your goals, ideal kind of systems and style in your business, as long as you're slowly getting there, that's already good enough. Because back then, I used to always beat myself up. Okay, why didn't I handle this properly? Okay, why I didn't blah, 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 blah. So it's a never-ending negative self-talk. And it has affected my performance as an Airbnb host. Because I was already paralyzed. Yes, because um, I remember it was, it was already the time of the lockdowns and all those things. I think it's May. Some, sometime in May, August, and September. And then I had to cancel so many bookings because of, of course, the pandemic and the restrictions instilled by the government. And it was so crazy. And when you have to respond to lots of complaints, you also have to reply to a lot of cancellations. You also have to be professional about it. It was a lot being a perfectionist because being a perfectionist, I'd always love to see trips going well from start to the end. So when that happened to me, it was like, oh my gosh, I felt like it was the end of the world. 
but it's actually not because those things are already beyond my control so I don't have to fret about it looking back at it now because I don't have control over it and it's just natural and it's also for the people's safety but back then I, I wasn't really understanding those things so I remember I just laid down in the bed for three days all depressed and so sad and it was not a nice feeling but I guess um, I'm pretty sure everybody already heard about progress over perfection but I guess you'll never really know, know it unless you're already in that kind of situation and you also have to constantly forgive yourself and be patient with yourself and really know that there are things that you cannot control at all. The fourth is be kind and patient to yourself because you are just starting out. You don't have to have everything figured out because you are just starting out. You are just a beginner. You're still a beginner and there it, there are chapters in life for a reason it exists for a reason because right now if you're a beginner then be open be a beginner and if you're an intermediate level be open and be of that level because a lot of struggles that we have is stemming from things that we cannot accept about ourselves and as long as soon as you accept to yourself that okay i'm still a beginner i'm still super open to learning that's where everything starts instead of becoming someone who is okay i'm a beginner i must know it all those two things embody a different kind of energy and i'm gonna go with the first one because how will you learn if you don't want people to teach you if you don't want life to teach you right and we are part of the world so we shouldn't really you know just stay in the corner and create a super small world for ourselves we belong with each other and yes being kind and patient to yourself will really pay off especially when it comes to your health because if I was kind and patient to myself when I started, I wouldn't get sick. This year I endured four illnesses and it, it's coming from overwork. Back then when I got sick, I always beat myself up. Why am I sick? Why am I always like this, like that? But I, I was focusing on the outcome instead of the root of it. And it's actually overwork and it's actually perfectionism and so many things so when once i start changing that i saw life more clearly that i don't have to overwork myself to the point that i'll get sick just to prove that i work hard that was a really tough lesson that i learned this year because i thought all those times that i was being kind to myself but i was not i was punishing myself yes so it was really you know you don't have to make those mistakes that's why I'm telling you this now so that you don't go to that path, to that really dark path, you know? So let's move on to the fifth lesson that I learned this year. It's the no man is an island. So what do I mean by this? You can't do everything all by yourself. Yes, a lot of these lessons stem from my perfectionism that I'm slowly getting over with, you know? So you need help from other people in order for your business to grow i always remind myself that you can't trust other people about things you'll never really know how brilliant your team is unless you open your eyes to see it there are a lot of things that your staff can do or know how to handle that you can't and when you try handling things that you can't handle everything's gonna be more messed up. I believe there's a zone of genius in every one of us. And as long as we recognize those zones of genius um, and your team complement each other, things are gonna be so much better. And most especially if you get sick, you really have to depend on the people around you. You can, no man is an island, you know? 
The sixth lesson that I learned this year is that feedback is something to be grateful for. Yes, because we all know that as a perfectionist, you always like swim around and like when things don't go the way that you want it to be, you beat yourself up. And that's not helpful for you, your business and your guests. This is something that I'm still currently learning. Right now I'm trying to reframe my mindset that feedback is something to be grateful for because feedback exists for a reason because I believe that our guests also want our business to thrive. That's why they're sharing with us all the things that we can improve on. And I've met a lot of guests. I talked to a lot of guests telling me there is always a room for improvement. Um, it's, it is not something that they really say, but it's something implied and something I learned from the interaction because being a super beginner at this industry, in this field, it's super difficult if you don't get feedback on how you can improve on things that is in your business. Because if not because of those um, feedbacks, um, we won't maybe we don't know how to handle situations more you know sometimes those feedback are super negative but just like what my college professor told me once you get a really bad feedback for example once you get a super bad feedback you have to pick out the things that matters that will help you improve on and then you know Put away the rest get the good parts that okay this is right this is something that I can really improve on pick out those fruits and then treat everything as noise because sometimes people don't really know how to communicate better and at the same time they're also doing the best that they can in that given moment so um, yeah everything's not perfect there's no such thing as perfect, more like everyone's trying our best in every single day to show up and be the best person that we can be all the time. If we put too much emotions on the feedback, we'll be paralyzed, <laughs> just like me. Um, we received a really kind of kind of like a super disastrous guest at some point and it was super, it was a super crazy experience and I really felt like I was super emotionally charged. In my designer kind of life, I'm already super used to feedback, getting feedback all the time when it comes to design. I already learned how to separate myself from my output and that's really nice because I don't get affected anymore. But in this new industry, it was really difficult for me because I've, at first I, it felt like this person is trying to hurt me, my team, and my business. So that is not a really nice mindset if you want to grow because these feedbacks are something to be grateful for. No matter how it was delivered to you, the negative feedback, it is something that we can learn from. Negative feedback won't kill you. Back when I was really like super starting out, I thought that negative feedback would kill the business immediately, you know? But there will always be people who will believe in you and what you offer and all those things. So that is something worth clinging on to instead of one negative feedback that you have for your place. We really can't please everyone around us, you know? It's actually a very comforting kind of belief because at least you know that there will also be people who will appreciate what you do, what you have, and what you offer, and that's really nice. If feedback may be positive or negative, won't kill you. It won't kill you. It is something that I've been reminding myself every single day because sometimes I be so fearful when I see positive or negative review. Yes, so I guess that's it for my video. Thank you for watching and thank you for staying right till the end. Yay! Yes, so thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you learned something. So yeah, don't be a stranger um, to my subscribers and to all the Airbnb hosts. 
that will be watching this video if you're a beginner intermediate or like if you're a super boss when it comes to the business and the industry feel free to comment it down below so i know that i am not alone so no matter what stage you are in your business right now feel free to comment it down below and i'd love to see your lessons so we both can learn from each other so this is also my year-end review and realizations for this year and again thanks for watching and see you on the next one don't forget to like and subscribe bye